It is amazing how the magnitude and beauty of Yosepa could come together without blueprints or any other modern instruments of architecture. The vision and calculations of Yosepa lay in the mind and memory of Tuyone Pulotu. I never draw a blueprint for, for a canoe. Um, um, the model was actually, it was not for me to look at, to build a canoe from. The, the idea of the model is to take away the people's questions how the canoe gonna look like while we're building it. If I didn't build a model, I would have wasted a lot of time. People would come and talk to me, asking me this, asking me that. So what happened in the, uh, in the process of building the canoe, we, uh, when people come um, and ask questions, I just said, uh, the, the model is over there. If you have any questions, after looking at it, then you come and ask me. But see, that allow me a lot of time to work on that kind of Yosepa brought many people together during the building period. Some of these were the Maori people of the Cook Islands. Hey, my name is Tau Te Anoa Tumute Warawar. Hey, I'm the Mato Korero Kia Koto. Tumue Kapu. Kapu Runga Kapu Laro. Koatea Kopapa. The chance that I chanted on this waka or canoe is a traditional chant. It comes from our uh, tribe in the Cook Islands in Rarotonga, the Makea Nui tribe. Is why we have this chant uh, exactly for the canoe. To bless the canoe in a traditional chant is to make sure that the canoe uh, takes a, a sort of a long term uh, traveling and they can be looked after by our ancestors and they can be looked after by our traditional um, gods in the, in the past and also uh, can be looked after by our Lord uh, for this community uh, because it's very important uh, for us to understand our culture and also for the Hawaiians to understand their culture. <laughs> The logs were carved into specific shapes and the pieces connected. The next step in the process was sanding the halls. At that time, Yosepa received many special visitors. According to Hawaiian custom, when anyone entered into someone else's place, whether it be a home or a village area, or onto this type of an area, which is a kapu area, 
the carving of a canoe or building of a house, they would oli. The oli is called a oli kahea, where you tell who you are, perhaps, and what is your purpose of coming and asking permission to enter that area. You would be responded to with a oli como, which is a, a greeting from those of this place, acknowledging your presence and inviting you to come in and to receive the privileges of um, entering and being a part of whatever is going on. The Keiki are from Kekula Kayapuni Ohaula, a Hawaiian language immersion school located two miles from Iosepa's building site. Um, <laughs> I want to tell you this is how I learned to make canoe. When I was in his age, this is what we did uh, in Tonga where, where you grew up. There's nothing else to do. Uh, you go to school, we come home. Uh, some of you do a little bit work at home. <laughs> then we head to the beach. The, the ocean was our uh, where our activities was held. And this is what we did. We built small canoe. We we didn't all build it with wood. We used to have the coconut. You cut the coconut in half, take the meat out, then you have your boat already carved out. And we go there and race. What do you do? You, the race is one way. We, we put it out and see who has the fastest boat. And we'll stand there and watch. The wind will take them as, and then disappear into the horizon. And, um, and that's what we did um, when we were small. And, and then when we go a little older, we build this type. And then onto the, the, the uh, Outrika canoe that we row. But those of you guys who work with this little canoe, that is the beginning of you becoming the greatest, greatest Hawaiian canoe builder. Bill Wallace was in charge of finding a name for the canoe. Like Kumu of the past, the name came to him in a dream. We're about let's say maybe about three or four months down the road working on the canoe and I was about ready to leave for the mainland to attend a Native American Indian conference up in um, Duluth, Minnesota and we had a little meeting and at that meeting I, I shared my, my thoughts with, with the, the workers and I said um, that I felt that it was my kuleana or my responsibility as a project director to basically pray and to ask Heavenly Father for direction in terms of what would be the appropriate name for this canoe. I had some inclination, I had some feelings uh, about the name of the canoe, but it wasn't until I got back home after that trip that I went down to the canoe site and we were working one day and then I, I told him, I said, well, I'm going to take a little break and rest and go back home, you know, and, and I'll be back to the canoe site later on that day. And so it was 
at that time in, at, when I was at home and I, I had a little nap in the afternoon and, and the place that I chose to sleep was uh, where our, in our living, in our family room, in our home, we have all of these pictures of my great grandfather, my grandfather and my kupuna hanging on the walls. And um, while I was asleep there, in my dream, I saw my grandfather and my grandmother. And these were pioneers who, uh, uh, my grandfather was about seven years old when he left Laie with his uncle and aunt to live in Yosepa in Skull Valley in Utah. But in my dream, I could see my grandpa, my grandmother, uh, some of the Pukahi ancestors that were there, Auntie Maleka's um, uh, father, and, um, and a lot of the uh, Navahines and the old timers. And they were there with Samoan, Tongans, Tahitians, Maoris, and Native American Indians. And they were having this great celebration. And they had their own band playing music and everybody was dancing and having a great time. And in this dream, I was standing off on the side and just watching and observing. And all of a sudden, towards the end of the dream, my grandfather just turned to me and he looked at me and he smiled. And he pointed to this um, canoe that we had. And he says, this is Yosepa. And the dream ended. And so I was startled and I jumped up, you know, and I sat up and I said, oh my goodness, you know, the canoe's name will be Yosepa. And the name of the colony that my grandpa and grandma lived in and, and the, the pioneers from Hawaii and the Pacific went to in, in Utah, in Skull Valley, the name of the colony was also called Yosepa. And the colony there was actually named in honor of Joseph F. Smith, who was uh, a, a missionary, you know, here in Hawaii when he was 15 years old, had served three missions here in Hawaii, became a general authority, an apostle, and at this particular time had just become the prophet of the church. And so it was uh, the colony in, in Skull Valley, Yosepa, was named after him. And so when the name came to me, I, I, I realized that, you know, it was... Uh, the appropriate name and the right name for the canoe. 